I just appreciate the opportunity uh, as the Dean of the Hawking College Energy Institute and uh, it's kind of been a, a project that's about 30 years in its making. Our former president, Dr. John Light, was uh, green when green wasn't cool and we uh, had an energy center uh, not of this caliber at the main campus. Came back to, to Hawking in 2003 to head up the advanced energy and fuel cells in our hybrid programs. About a year and a half ago, things really began to, to move in the green movement. Uh, then uh, Senator Obama was here and had a chance to meet with him as well. We got funded through the uh, U.S. Department of Commerce Economic Development Administration. They fund us $1.6 million for this. We had to match that. And then a year ago, this past September, we started on the construction in pursuit of LEED Platinum. We felt that uh, if we were going to do it, we were going to go uh, kind of, as we say, all the way. The Hawking Energy Institute was a project, a very low budget project, first of mm -hmm. all. You know, and they wanted a platinum building. You know, and that whole idea is the building needs to teach the students and be an right. example for what they ought to be aspiring to and right. showing that. But it also was very open, so you can try different things because these technologies were evolved, and so it was very open and you could change things, you could see all the mechanical right. so the students could see what was going on. And so that's really partly why it looks like it looks, just because it's very open and expressive and, and honest. The phone's ringing, we have the emails going, uh, we have people stopping by because uh, it is a very unique facility even when you see it from the highway. And uh, I said to Jack Hedge from Design Group when we started on the project, I said, I want to make it weird so it'll catch people's eyes. So, so in some people's eyes it is weird, but it is very functional and it is very green. Yeah, the, the shape of the building was one where we had to keep the plan pretty rectilinear. We put a little cock in the administrative sure. part of it. Part of that was to make the lobby more interesting. This part of the building is more public for big activities the uh, kind of this innovation center is right here mm -hmm. for folks to bring in new innovative things for the students to see and stuff. So it, it's here, and, and this then is the educational zone of the building. You've got kind of administration right between the two. So that's right. really the way it's organized. If you notice, all the classrooms are kind of around this open mm -hmm. space. Sure. What, would, what would be just a normal lounge eating space becomes a learning space. And the idea is that that's outside all the classrooms. You can talk on the marker board, what you just learned in class, students can interact. So the, the learning doesn't stop here. Just it's even students out. when they're taking a break are talking about it and thinking about things. And that's really where education is going these days because people don't just learn from lectures. They learn from doing and thinking about it and doing and trying it and talking to other people about it. This is a uh, working laboratory, functioning laboratory. But you can see everything's open. It's an open concept. There's no uh, ceiling in here. Here's a ground source heat pump located here. When, when I had it designed, we put clear tubing in so that the students can actually see the uh, propylene glycol that's circulating. And this goes down 307 feet into the ground. And this is our heat transfer medium uh, for the ground source heat pump. So this is a major heat source for, uh, for this. There are 14 of these throughout the building. And uh, so uh, we just started uh, the first geothermal training class here in Ohio. We have uh, 32 students in that. And they're learning here, and we are also applying that uh, location. Let's step out the back. It's this community thing. We're, we're trying to green the community, you know, green destinations. You know, you have all this beauty around you, the forest. And you know, how can we make everything compatible and work together? So those are some of the things that we've, we've added to get the, uh, the Institute underway with two associate degree programs. Uh, in 2003, we had three students. Uh, this fall, between first and second year students, we have about 120 students here. And What we're looking at here is uh, natural gas vehicle technology. Uh, as you can see, the, this uh, gas meter that's coming here, this is uh, the same gas that we use on the other end of the building to make electricity with. What you hear running in the background is a, uh, is a compressor. It's one of the companies we work with, Bauer Company, uh, a German company, but they have uh, major operations in uh, Virginia Beach. We're going to be setting up a, a compressor training facility here uh, in the uh, early spring. And we'll be adding uh, propane and hydrogen here as well. 
and that goes along with what we do here with electrolyzing. And we're going to be beefing up over the years and taking the photovoltaics and using electrolyte process with the electricity and stripping the hydrogen out of water and then we'll store it and then we'll compress it and put it in the vehicles and so forth. So those are some things that's going to be happening over the next few years as, as we uh, expand and uh, moving forward.